not show pity. And yet, when my wife died in birthing, and in dying into the life of my child unborn, I pitied myself. My lord sensed this, but instead of casting me down for weakness, he cast upon me a radiant beam of honor. He ordered my kin buried in the sacred caves reserved for royals and heroes. Unimaginable. Never again would I doubt that I am the Chosen of the Sun. Never again would pity find a place in me. Not for myself, or another. A mural of Meridian, in the Spire. When I first set eyes on the buried shadow, I trembled. Was I not the Chosen of the Sun? A blazing light of faith to shred and scatter darkness. Was it not my place to destroy this devil? But High Priest Bahavas instructed me in the prophecy, and set right my frame of mind. The murder of the true Sun King broke the cosmic cycle short of completion. The whole world cast into darkness, doomed. To resume and turn the wheel of time would require more than sun and faith. All forces must combine, all halves of nature join to one cause. Shadow to sun, night to day. Even a buried shadow wants the wheel to turn, for without a sun in the sky, there can be no shadow. My lord, the thirteenth king of the Karsha Sundom was murdered down by cowards who mistook firm rule for madness. Ever the strong are beset upon by the weak. So he said, as the traitors launch their assault, as their cannons forged by Osaram filth topple the battlements and burst the gates. I would have fought to the end, but it was his will, the will of the sun that I lead the Prince and Queen into the West, to safety. My Lord did not hesitate. He saw his fate. He looked into the sun, and he did not blink. With me, he sent kestrels, nobles, sun priests, and slaves. Killing all that stood in the way, I carved a path to sunfall. There. We joined others to gather the strength to take back our home. But our strength only faded until the buried shadow was brought to light. So long as King Itaman languishes at sunfall, coddled by his mother, he will never learn the true lessons of the sun. I have tried to instruct him. But the shadow of his mother's influence is upon him. I took him to the palace balcony to behold an offering of sacrifice in the ring. But he showed no thirst for it. He averted his gaze. Look to the sun, I told him. Do not shield your eyes. In all things, it is absolute. One day, it nurtures life, and the next, scorches life away. It burns the skin of champions and wretches alike. Never does the sun show pity. That is the example a Sun King must follow. The example of your father. But before my instruction could take hold, she was there, clutching him to her robes, burying his face against her breast. How is a king to rule when he cannot even see? There's only one man big enough to wear this. Helis. This is his shelter. Not exactly fancy. What would you expect of a fanatic? His only extravagance is his brutality. So you know him? Just enough to want to stop him. Reality. Holy 
Holy Meridian in the hands of profligates. Debased. The spire, towering above the horizon like in a glittering spike through the center of my mind. Every daybreak in exile is a mark of failure, but the count of days runs thin. I will see Meridian retaken, the profligates slaughtered, a true king restored to the Mesa throne. In this, I have become an instrument of prophecy.